Hi, my name is Danielle Apple, and this is my research project on blockchain, a peer-to-peer -peer electronic cash system that eliminates single points of failure with a Python implementation, completed with Professor Provost. So first of all, what is blockchain? Most people hear blockchain and they might think Bitcoin, which is a popular cryptocurrency powered by blockchain. But blockchain technology can be used in any situation where you need to verify transactions, which brings us to the main objective of blockchain, a cryptographic implementation that uses a decentralized and distributed ledger to verify transactions. Decentralized and distributed ledger means that a copy of the ledger is available to everyone. To change the ledger, a malicious actor would need to simultaneously hack into a majority of computers with a copy of the ledger in it at the exact same time, which means that there's no single point of failure. And blockchain is also so appealing because it eliminates the need for a trusted third party, like a bank in a transaction. It can't be altered. And even though the blockchain can be accessed by anyone, identifying information is kept private and secure. And unlike a bank account, Anyone can use Bitcoin in any country, regardless of the banking infrastructure in their community, making it incredibly accessible. So now let's talk a little bit about transactions. First, we define electronic coins as a string of digital signatures. Owners can transfer coins by digitally signing a hash of the previous transaction, plus the public key of the future owner. To verify ownership of the chain, a payee can just verify the chain of signatures. And so what we really need to make this secure is to make sure no one can double spend any coins. And we do this by broadcasting all the transactions so we have a well-established order. And this also helps us eliminate the single point of failure. So now that we've seen the benefits of a blockchain, let's consider its structure. A block contains uh, transaction data and a timestamp, the parties involved in the transaction, and a unique hash that links the block to the chain. The hash behaves like an indicator of unauthorized changes. If the block is changed, the hash value will change too, which would be inconsistent with the rest of the chain. So here's a look at my block code. You'll notice here it has information about transactions, timestamps, as well as a previous hash, which will link it to the rest of the chain. And then the index and the nonce are used within the actual chain. And we can also take a hash of a block to hash the block. We actually just get all of the information from the block, so exactly these fields, and then we go ahead and hash that. And these blocks link all the way back to the first block, which is what we call a genesis block, which can be seen in my code for the blockchain. A blockchain has a list of unconfirmed transactions, a list of the blocks, and once we create this, we actually have to create the genesis block, which I was just talking about. And so we go ahead and create this with zeros in all the relevant places and add it to the chain. To add a block to the chain, we must have a valid proof of work to verify the block. To form this proof, we have to mine for blocks, which means that we have to scan for a value that when hashed with an algorithm such as SHA-256, the hash begins with a given number of zero bits, which increases. And the average work required is exponential in the number of zero bits at the beginning. So it gets exponentially more difficult to find these values, but they can be verified by just one calculation. And these hashes are 64 bits a piece, which means that there are trillions of possibilities. So not only is it arduous to complete, but someone else could finish the problem faster than you and leave you with nothing. The first one to mine it gets the block. And mining is also incredibly costly since it requires high amounts of electricity and specialized hardware. The proofs are also what make the blockchain unalterable because to alter anything, the whole proof of work 
for the whole chain would have to be recomputed. Now we can take a look at the mining code. So if we want to mine for, Bit for blockchain, um, we go ahead and go until we have a proof of work. So we go up to the proof of work. And this essentially involves a while loop of trying and trying over and over again to get a certain number of zeros at the beginning of this hash value. And now to see how this code meets the requirement that the blockchain actually be accessible, we can see that with Flask and a REST API, we can make this queryable from the command line. And so I've just went ahead and put a couple of transactions into our blockchain um, that some lucky miner found those blockchain and then um, bought something with them. And then this here is going to make it so that it's going to be running on port 5000, as you can see down here. And now if I go ahead and actually run the code, we get that this is now running on HTTP with port 5000. So I'm going to go ahead and copy this. And now from the command line, I can use the command CURL with the code I just copied and the command chain to go ahead and get the chain. And we can see here that we've got some information. So first we've got that the length of the chain is four. Here we can see that Genesis block, so that's the very first block. Here's the second block that um, Alex bought um, to bought St. James Place, and then we've got the third block here where um, Joanne bought Park Place, and finally our fourth block here. In conclusion, Blockchain is a game-changing financial technology. It puts the power in the people's hands and provides universal access to financial services. And if we can specifically consider the drawbacks of Bitcoin, eventually the cost to mine Bitcoin will outweigh the price of the hardware, cooling, and other costs, although there are provisions in place for this time. And specifically interesting is to note how much the price of Bitcoin has skyrocketed recently, now at $58,000, $192 as of today. Um, and Bitcoin is also no longer as private as it was intended. Um, the creator intended it to be anonymous, but Bitcoin is now only anonymous for those who are extremely cautious with their identity since most Bitcoin is now traded between centralized exchanges that do require ID and occasionally bank account verification. So it's not difficult to trace who Bitcoin belongs to or where it's going. And these are my sources and the links for my images.